Hey everybody, Andy Nelson here. So who has been to the Hard Rock Cafe? Specifically the Hard Rock Cafe in Panama. And I don't mean uh, Panama City, Florida. I'm not even sure if there is one there. I'm talking about Panama, the country, Central America. Well, I haven't, but you know what? I actually got this when I was down in Panama. Yes, believe it or not, I was in the army at one time and I went down to Panama for a jungle training rotation. And sure enough, I said, I'm gonna get myself some things, you know, while I'm down here. I'm 19, I'm in a foreign country, you know, so I'm buying some uh, local Panamanian art. And when I say that, I mean tapestries, which are probably made in China for <laughs> all I know. But also I got some shirts and one of the shirts was this one right next to the water, you know, some street vendor. Now, I'm pretty sure looking at this, and I don't think I knew this, eh, I probably knew this then. I think this is probably counterfeit. And you say, what is a counterfeit, okay? Well, let me start out with this. So counterfeiting, we've all heard about it. And if you've watched any of my videos, you've heard me talk about trademark infringement. Counterfeiting is always trademark infringement. Uh, trademark infringement is not always counterfeiting. What do I mean? Simple. Trademark infringement happens when marks crash into one another, and that is likely to lead to consumer confusion about source, sponsorship, or affiliation, okay? Um, so you might have somebody have like the, the soft stone cafe and people might say, wait a minute, is that, you know, consumers be confused about that or how about the hard stone or the hard slate cafe or hard slate restaurant or something like that? Eh, arguable, right? Whether consumers might be confused. Counterfeiting though means it's trademark infringement that is up here. We're talking about deceptive, uh, deceptive, deceptive infringement. That is taking a trademark that is registered with the Patent and Trademark Office and someone creates a, what we call a spurious imitation of that mark. This, right? That means basically taking the exact mark. There's no doubt about it. It's not this, so, you know, this accident. This is taking the exact mark, slapping it on some, slapping it, <laughs> slapping it on something and profiting from it. So, it's the worst kind of trademark infringement there is. And luckily for you, because you're always gonna be the good guy, right? If you're registered, you have to have a registered trademark. If your registered trademark is counterfeit, if it's infringed, uh, you're gonna have remedies. But if it's counterfeited, you're gonna have even better potential remedies. And here's what you might be able to do. You might be able to, if you have to sue uh, these folks because you do not want your brand eroded by junk. I mean, this cotton is terrible. If I I probably knew it at the time that this was garbage, but I feel it now. It's just like terrible. You know, does Hard Rock Cafe want to be associated with a really junky product? No, that can cause some real brand damage. You don't want that to happen to you either. So if you are getting counterfeited, you have to sue. What can you get? Well, tell you what. One, you can get, you know, your actual damage if you can prove it. That's not exactly easy. Um, or if the other person has profits, you can get those. But I mean, you're talking about a lot of proof issues. That could be tough. But let's say you're able to do that. You also might be able to get those. A court may triple them, right, to give you a remedy. That could be very helpful. Uh, you might be able to get your attorney's fees paid by the other side. That's quite a hammer as well. And a third hammer for counterfeiting, uh, if you don't want to go through the process of trying to prove damages or what they gain and all this math and that sort of thing, there's something we call statutory damages that is only applicable to counterfeiting situations, not typical infringement situations. Uh, what this means is if the court thinks it's just, they can just pick a number and award that to you. Anywhere between $1,000, which is not ever really going to be just because if you get to a place where you're getting $1,000, you just spent a lot more money to get there. So that's no good. But up to $200,000 potentially for counterfeiting. Um, each time a counterfeit mark is used on a different type of good. So if you have different sorts of goods and they use the counterfeit mark, you could really stack those damages. Uh, and the real only limit is, if I recall correctly, there's a $2 million cap, but I don't think anyone's gonna complain about that. So uh, counterfeiting, you're not gonna be the counterfeiter. If you are, stop it. <laughs> but, um, you know, there is a an avenue uh, to compensate you potentially uh, if your registered trademark is being counterfeited. And I'll tell you what, if you got a good brand out there, uh, there's a good chance in this day and age, especially with everything being easy on the web, online, etc., that you're going to be counterfeited. Uh, anyway, if you have any questions about this video, shoot me a note, leave a comment below, and if anybody would benefit from uh, the information in this video, please feel free to share it. Until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.